Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Last year, right before the Super NES Classic Edition came out, I tried my hand at making a Nintendo 64 Classic console at home. And uh, one of the most frequent comments that I got from you guys was that you all wanted to see a GameCube Classic Edition. At first, I kind of just missed the idea. Like, man, that's too crazy. There's no way I could make a machine that's powerful enough to run GameCube games at that small form factor. But as time went on, I thought about it more and more, and I started wondering, how could Nintendo go about making one if they chose to do so? So for this episode, I decided to really challenge myself and find a way to make it a reality. And here it is. This is my GameCube Classic Edition system. In this video, I'll show you the process I took to make it from start to finish, we'll check out how well it performs, and we'll talk about whether or not Nintendo might make their own official GameCube Mini over the next few years. Let's check it out. Now, one of my main questions when setting out to make this console was to determine if and how Nintendo could realistically go about making an official GameCube Classic Edition. To me, what that means is producing a console which can play a reasonable selection of GameCube hits, is similar in size to the NES and Super Nintendo Classic systems, and would be reasonably affordable, which to me means under about $100. For this experiment, my first step was to determine what sort of hardware to use. For the N64 Classic system, this was much easier. The Raspberry Pi is a very compact and affordable single board computer, which is commonly used for these sorts of micro consoles. And while the Raspberry Pi is powerful enough to run a good portion of the 64 library, the GameCube is a much more demanding system, so it was clearly not a good option for this project. However, after a bit of research, I came across the UpSquared computer from upboard.org. This board is pretty similar to the Raspberry Pi, but it is much more powerful and claims to be the world's fastest x86 maker board. For those more technically inclined viewers who are interested, I'll toss some specs up on the screen for you to check out. All in all, I was fairly certain that this would be my best bet for building a compact console with enough power to emulate the GameCube. And after getting in contact with them, the Upboard team was nice enough to send me one of their units for use in this project. Now, one potential option I haven't covered thus far would be for Nintendo to use real GameCube-compatible hardware, meaning a machine with the same architecture and specs as the original system, which undoubtedly would be much cheaper in 2018 than back in 2001. However, I am no hardware expert, so I can't really speculate whether that would be a viable option or how much it might cost in the end, so I'm going to work on the premise that the GameCube Classic would need to emulate the original system in the same way that the NES and Super NES Classic consoles do. So with the UpSquared board in hand, it was time for me to pick my choice of operating system. At first I thought Linux would be a good choice, because it tends to be less resource heavy than Windows, and could potentially free up some computing power for 3D rendering. However, in my experience, it seemed like the Dolphin emulator was not as well optimized for Linux as it is for Windows, so in the end I went back to the drawing board, installed Windows 10, and to my surprise that seemed to really help improve overall system performance. So after installing and tweaking the GameCube emulator to the best of my ability, I started to see some success. Certain titles like Animal Crossing, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and Super Smash Bros. Melee seem to run pretty well with minimal slowdowns. But other games seem to have bigger issues. If Nintendo were to use a board like this, you can imagine that they would probably be able to improve performance by working directly with the manufacturer and the original code to help optimize and tweak emulation. So in the end, I'm putting this one down as a success. Of the games I tested, about two-thirds of them were at least playable and seemed to work pretty well. For the user interface, I decided to go with Emulation Station, which is the same front-end used by RetroPie, the software I used for the Mini N64. This allowed me to bypass the Windows desktop and provide a clean, simple interface from which to launch each game. At this point, it was time to design the case. One of my issues with the N64 Classic that I wanted to improve with this system was to include a USB hub for multiple controllers. So much like with my earlier project, I modeled a case to fit the PC with Tinkercad and used my 3D printer to bring it to life, this time allowing for some extra space for a four-port hub in the top of the unit. After some light sanding, I painted the case with just some normal acrylic colors to match the original console. And here is the end result! So, this is my finished GameCube Classic Edition console. How well did we hit the marks? Well, I set out with a goal of making a system which was functional, compact, and affordable. To the first point, the system is able to consistently run a solid set of titles, but some of the more essential GameCube hits like Mario Sunshine remain unplayable. However, I think we managed to hit the mark here in the bigger context of the experiment, so I think we can call this one a success. Regarding the system size, it is a little on the larger end, but I think it can still pass for a mini console, especially when compared to the original. 
You wouldn't want it to be any larger, but as it stands, I think I did the best I could to keep the form factor small while allowing for adequate ventilation and these four controller ports at the top. So finally, we get to affordability. Well, this is the biggest issue. The upsquared board I used for this project sells for between $230 to over $300, depending on how much RAM and onboard storage you go for. So at least for a homemade project, it's far too expensive to be anywhere close to the official NES or Super Nintendo Classic systems. Even if you account for a direct relationship with manufacturers, odds are Nintendo would still be paying at least $100 for each unit, and in order to make a profit, they would have to raise the price much higher for consumers. So could Nintendo make the GameCube Classic Edition a reality? Well, probably not anytime soon. It kind of makes sense when you think about it. Again, I am no expert, so take this with a grain of salt, but as far as I know, in order to accurately emulate a console like the GameCube, you would need a system probably almost as powerful as the Nintendo Switch, which of course is on a very different level from the NES and Super Nintendo Classic Edition consoles in both power and price tag. But for a DIY project, I've had a lot of fun with this challenge, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about the process along the way. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what other sort of DIY projects you'd like to see in the future. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, that sort of thing. And if you'd like to help out even more, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. Otherwise, I hope you'll look out for the next video. Take care.